Hello everyone, and today uh, we're going to be talking about how to fix Rome Remastered's historical accuracy. So, and uh, today we're going to be taking a look at the Imperial Campaign. So, you know, it doesn't matter what faction I start out as, we're just going to be taking a look at the campaign map and some of the main things that I would like to see changed in any mod that really wants to have that focus on historical accuracy. So, of course, um, I do have a video about the historical inaccuracies in the original Rome Total War. Um, so you can check that out. I'll have a link to that somewhere. But uh, in any case, let's uh, show you all what I'm talking about here. So, you know, the... The original Rome Total War has all these same problems, and of course, Rome Remastered uh, remasters the game. It doesn't change um, the gameplay and the balance and things, so that's why a lot of those historical issues that I'm going to be talking about are still retained in the remaster. And that includes character names and uh, Rome being three families. So l let's start off uh, from the west and go east. So. You know, uh, Gaul and Spain are sort of amalgam factions, right? So one of my issues in the original Rome Total War is that you have these amalgam factions that combine a whole bunch of tribes, right, into one big super faction. And it's just something that bothers me because it's, it's just kind of immersion breaking, like seeing... I don't know, the sort of medieval Kingdom of England start position for uh, the Britannian faction, the Britons here, uh, is a little immersion breaking, seeing a giant Germanic faction is bothersome, and seeing a huge Gaul as well is bothersome. And, you know, Gaul and Spain bother me the most of these amalgam factions, and let me tell you why. Uh, they bother me because they have, and you know, this goes for Numidia too. They have territories that are not contiguous, right? So, um, Spain, the faction Spain, uh, has Scalabis in the west, and then Asturica in the northwest, and then it has a, bu a bunch of Gaul territory in the middle, and then it has Oscar in the east and Carthago Nova. Of course, Carthago Nova should be Carthaginian colony, right, at this point. But in any case, um, these amalgam factions and Numidia, of course, has Siwa that's way over here by Egypt. And of course, you know, there were some Numidian tribes that lived here, and that's why they did this. And that's why they went for this abstraction here. Uh, but, uh, in any case, I do like this new stra strategic view of the map here. But in any case, um, yeah, I really feel like any mod that wants to have a greater focus on historical accuracy and better start positions should, you know, choose a tribe. Because, you know, you have other factions here in the game that start out with just a couple provinces or three provinces like Thrace over here, Dacia. And, um, you know, it's okay to have a faction that starts out with just one starting province or two. And, you know, these tribal factions absolutely, in my opinion, should represent one tribe or a couple of tribes, like a confederation. But it shouldn't be like every single Germanic tribe, every single Britannic tribe, every, every single Gaelic tribe, and omitting, like, a couple of Gaelic tribes here for no reason other than, I don't know, uh, and making them contiguous, of course, that's going to really help, and for Numidia as well. That will also help the AI, because the AI has really a really hard time managing non-contiguous empires, like, look at how it manages the Scipii family. Uh, holdings. So let's go back to the map there. So yeah, those are 
the main things I want to say about the barbarian factions in the West here. Um, and of course, giving Carthage Carthago Nova, that's going to really improve their start position at the start as well. And Carthage could definitely use a bit of a buff there. But uh, in any case, uh, yeah, that's what I have to say about Western Europe. I don't have too much else to say about it. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, I do wish North Africa had a couple more starting regions, especially on the coast here, but that's neither here nor there. It's not really about historical accuracy. So let's move over to Greece. So you've got the Greek cities faction. Now the Greek cities faction really bothers me because of course in the 270 BC start date um, you did have like a sort of alliance of a few Greek cities against the invasions of Macedon and Epirus as well. Um, and uh, so that alliance was made up of, well, in, in, mo in historically accurate mods like Europa Barbarorum, for example, the cities that make up that, his, that faction are, the Cremonidian League, are Sparta, Athens, and Rhodes. And, you know, it, it makes sense and it makes for a good faction because not only is it fun for the player, because it's a really cool faction, you're in an interesting start position, you've got the old classical style Greek warfare with limited cavalry, um, but a good navy. Um, not only do you have that, but it's also good for the AI, right? So the AI, the Greek city's AI is, you know, Greek cities start out with Thermon, the Aetolian league there, and Sparta and Syracuse and Pergamum and Rhodes, but not Athens. Um, not Athens for some reason. Uh, it's just a very strange amalgam here because you've got the kingdom of Pergamum and the the tyrant of Syracuse and the Aetolian League and the kingdom of Sparta combined as one faction. And it doesn't make sense. Like, it makes sense to, at least with this start date, have Sparta, Athens, and Rhodes together. But not Pergamum, not Aetolia, not Syracuse. So that's something that I'd like to see mods tackle. Any mod that wants to uh, work on the gameplay, work on the historical accuracy of the campaign, that's something I would like to see tackled. Um, and also Macedon owning uh, Paionia here, Bilazora. So uh, thank you to my subscriber, commenter, who told me that if you hold down shift, um, you see the province name and everything about the province. Of course, it used to be that you right-clicked on it and that would show you everything, but now you have to hold down shift. So that's good to see. And also uh, Dacia and Thrace. It would be good to see uh, Dacia like start out as a Gete faction here, a Getic faction, and then Thrace be like the Odrysian kingdom here, the Thracian kingdom, just at Tylus. I think that would be uh, a good compromise for them uh, because they are kind of amalgam factions too. And uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. And of course, if the mod chooses to combine the Roman factions, some people don't like combining the Roman factions out of either nostalgia or out for gameplay purposes because the AI, of course, does better when it's fighting single front wars. Uh, even in the remaster and the, even in the newer Total Wars, the AI does better with single front wars. So having the Roman families is not something that really bothers me that much. Um, but if you do combine the Roman families, then it opens up some faction slots. Because, of course, right now, as of right now, uh, the recording of this video, the faction slots have not been increased to 31, as they said they will do. Uh, so yeah, the only way to get new faction slots is to combine the Romans into one faction. Of course, making it more historically accurate. Um, so that's up to the mod maker to do. And of course, opening uh, opening up the faction slots allows for perhaps the Il an Illyrian faction or Epirus to be added, which will make the Balkans 
a more interesting theater of war. In uh, Total War Rome Remastered. And let's move on to uh, Asia Minor. Now, um, Asia Minor is actually not one of the worst offenders, I think, in the original Rome Total War, and same goes for uh, Rome Remastered. Uh, I do wish the Ptolemies had their territories in southern Asia Minor here, like at um, Lycia and Caria. Having another city here like Side or Seleucia would be cool to see, would be nice indeed. Um, but, uh, yeah, having the Ptolemies have their territory in Southern Asia Minor would be nice. Um, Pontus. Let's talk about Pontus. Of course, at the start date here, uh, Pontus did not control the city of Sinope. It did not control Cappadocia either, Mazaka here. So, you know, Sinope should be a little more to the west here, right here at the tip. And it should be, um, the province of Paphlagonia. And then you could have Amasia here, and that would be the province of Pontus, and I think that would be a good compromise. And then Cappadocia should be a rebel province. Because, of course, it was the kingdom of Cappadocia. It was its own sort of Perso-Macedonian uh, Achaemenid successor state, just like um, Pontus, Armenia, Atropatine, um, Cappadocia, under the Ar Ariarathid dynasty, was its own uh, Achaemenid successor state kingdom. And it should be independent here, not part of Pontus. Um, in terms of the situation here between um, the Seleucids and uh, the Ptolemies, uh, I, do, uh, I don't really have too much to say about that. So let's move on to the east. So, of course, Susa was controlled by the Seleucids. So just give it to the Seleucids. Right. And I would like to see perhaps another uh, Mesopotamian city here. I'd like to see Uruk, actually, in the province of Sumer. Because this prov uh, Mesopotamia was such a rich province for the Seleucids that I would like to see Uruk here, province of Sumer, and Susa given to the Seleucids as well. It would give them a huge boost. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, uh, so when I'm talking about fixing the historical accuracy, um, if I really wanted to go 100% to fix historical accuracy, of course, we would extend the campaign map to the east of the Caspian Sea, and we would um, have the Parthians be located at Nisa, just to the east of the Caspian Sea here. But unfortunately, since we can't do that, um, having them at Arsakia here is an okay compromise. Though I would like to see this province made a lot smaller here, and then you have Ekbatana with the province of Media right here. I think that would be a better division of provinces rather than this kind of strange little crescent of Media here. Um, and for uh, the Caucasus, or the South Caucasus, of course, uh, Armenia didn't control Colchis. The city of Kutaisi is fine, but Armenia didn't control Colchis. So having Colchis be a rebel territory would be nice. Um, having a new territory here, Caucasian Iberia, would be nice as well with its capital at Metzcheta or Harmazica. And of course, uh, Caucasian Albania up here with its capital at uh, Kabbalaka, right about at this location. Uh, would also be very nice to see in any historically accurate mod that seeks to make uh, the game more accurate. And, you know, in this uh, big swath of territory between Mazaka, this triangle between Mazaka, Artaxata, and um, Hatra, I would like to see a couple of provinces added. It would be good to see Komagene, with its capital at Nymphaios in this area over here. It would be good to see Sopene with its capital at um, Karkathiokerta around uh, this territory right here. And it would be good to see Edessa too, 
as opposed to Hatra, the territory of uh, Osroene. That would be good to see. And number one pet peeve, I want to see Artaxata replaced by Armavid. It's in the same area here, slightly northwest of Artaxata. Uh, Armavid was the capital of the Kingdom of Armenia at the time. Artaxata was, of course, founded about 100 years after the start date. And the faction leader of Armenia should not be Artaxias, again, the founder of Artaxata. Again, he lived about 100 years after the start date. Um, I'd like to see the faction leader be either Orontes, the Greek version, or Yervand, the Armenian version. Um, other than that, let's talk a little bit about the north here, the steppes. So first things first, uh, Parthia shouldn't have Campus Saka. Um, that's just annoying. I hate it. Um, and you know, you've got Scythia, which is kind of an amalgam faction. Uh, right, an amalgam for the Scythians and Sarmatian tribes. So, of course, if you want to keep the name Scythia, it would be good to have them just north of the Bosporus here, the north of the Crimea, um, where Campus Scythia is. Of course, this was like the royal Scythian kingdom. So it would, it would be good to have their start position right there. And then Tanais definitely as a rebel position. And then, uh, you know, if they wanted to go for a Sarmatian type, amalgam faction, then having just Campus Sarmate and maybe Campus Alani would be good uh, for such a Sarmatian amalgam faction without Tanais, without Campus Scythi. But that's up to the mod maker, of course. And uh, other than that, uh, you know, the unit rosters... Uh, of course, you know, things like flaming pigs and stuff like that. That's up to the discretion of the mod maker. Um, I'm not going to do too much advising in regards to unit rosters. Um, I actually find the unit roster abstraction in um, Rome Total War to be pretty cool. Like, every faction feels kind of diverse and different. So if you're kind of going for that vanilla enhanced sort of gameplay, uh, increasing the realism, then I would maybe remove some of those uh, historical units like the gladiators and stuff. Um, but other than that, that, that p people have talked about that kind of stuff to death, so I wanted to focus this uh, little talk on the campaign map. Um, other than that, that's pretty much all I had to say. So, I hope you all enjoyed this video about uh, making Total War Rome Remastered more historically accurate. Of course, all of this goes for the original Rome Total War as well. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to do a video like this for, um, uh, whatchamacallit, Barbarian Invasion, and perhaps for Alexander as well. So if you like this kind of video, if you like videos about the historical Total Wars and their mods, um, why can't I do this? If you like videos about the historical Total Wars and their mods, um, then stay tuned to the channel, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.